Good morning, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to this talk about Kubernetes event-driven autoscaling, where I'll show you how you can do application autoscaling, uh, which makes it super simple on Kubernetes. So first, before we dive into it, so my name is Tom Kerkhove. Uh, I'm an Azure architect at a company called Coldit, and I am one of the co-maintainers uh, of Keda. And if you want to reach out to me, you can always find me on GitHub or you can also ping me on Twitter. Uh, we are always open for feedback, so don't hesitate to reach out. So before we get started, let's have a look at how you can auto-scale applications on Kubernetes without Keda. So plain old Kubernetes, fresh cluster, how would that work? So if you have a look, imagine we have four deployments which represents applications. What you would typically do is you use a horizontal pod autoscaler, which allows you to scale on CPU and memory. So this works fine uh, in uh, vanilla Kubernetes. Now imagine you want to scale on one or more of these external dependencies at the top of the slide. How would that look like? So over, over on the Kubernetes side, you would use what's called an external metric, which basically defines uh, these metrics from outside of the cluster. Now, before you can use these external metrics, you would need to use a, a metric adapter. So a metric adapter basically pulls the metric from one of those systems, makes them available uh, for you to automatically scale on. Now, there is a caveat, however, you can only use one metric adapter. So if you want to use multiple of these systems, you'll have to choose one and make sure all the metrics are available in that one tool. So in this case, imagine you want to auto scale on Prometheus, Kafka and Azure Monitor. What you could do is then send all metrics from Kafka to Prometheus, uh, send all metrics from uh, Azure Monitor to Prometheus by using a tool like Prometheus. Now, all of this is a bit much, uh, and we with Gata figured we can make this a lot simpler so that you don't have to worry about all of this auto-scaling infrastructure. So with Gata, uh, we basically have a variety of scalers and secret sources so that you can automatically scale deployments, jobs, or practically anything uh, inside your cluster that has a slash scale sub resource. So it could be also a resource from a CRV from another tool that you're using. Um, then you just choose one of the 30 or more built-in scalers that we have, or you can build your own, or you can use an external scaler from the community and use scale your application by using that. Now, one of the beauties that we have is you can also optimize for cost and scale all the way down to zero so that your cluster resources are freeing up to those that actually need it. Then when Keda sees that there is new work coming in, we will basically scale you from zero to N instances to keep up with this. Um, security is important. Uh, so that's also why we uh, strive to have good authentication, which is simple, reusable, and manageable. And that's why we also allow you to um, manage that separately from the scaling definition. If you want, scope to a namespace or scope to the whole cluster, which you will see uh, later on. Uh, today, we're very happy to be a sandbox project, uh, and we're actually in the process of um, proposing to become an incubation project. So if you are actually already using Keda, it would be my pleasure to talk to you uh, so that we can convince the CNCF to graduate. Now, one of our main mantras is that it allows you to, to focus on the application and not the scaling internals itself. So we really want to do uh, as much as possible for you so that you don't have to worry about anything. Now, if we remove everything again and we have a look at what it looks like with Keda, basically, instead of adding uh, HPAs, what you will do is you will um, install Keda in your cluster. It has all the scalers out of the box. You don't have to worry about anything anymore. And then what you do is you deploy scaled objects, or if you're using jobs, the scaled job. The scaled job or object basically defines what you want to scale, when it has to scale, and how far it has to scale. Then for the rest, uh, basically Keda, uh, 
interprets these by using an operator and then it handles everything for you. So it has a scale controller that basically checks the external dependencies uh, and then it manages the auto scaling for you and under the hood, it will actually use an HPA as well. So fairly simple, you just install Kena, you create the scaled object or a scaled job and all the rest is managed for you. No longer need to worry about external metrics, uh, one or more metric adapters, no, we manage it for you. So how does it work under the hood? For us, it is very uh, important that um, we do not reinvent the wheel. So that's why we are extending uh, Kubernetes. So Keda only handles the zero to one and the one to zero scaling. For all the rest, we uh, basically rely on the HPA and serve custom external metrics, sorry, to the HPA. So we are actually using a metric adapter ourselves, but we make sure that we support all the systems that you need across all the cloud platforms. Now, like I mentioned, we have a lot of these built-in scalers. We also allow you to use add-ons, um, which are not maintained by us, but maybe by another vendor, another product, or maybe yourself. Uh, and we make it super simple to get it installed, either by using Helm uh, or the operator framework. So you can also find this on the operator hub. Now, what scalers do we support? Well, actually, these are just a couple of them, but we basically support all the major cloud vendors and uh, all the major products in the ecosystem. If we are missing uh, some, don't hesitate to uh, open an issue or maybe even contribute the scaler to us. And then you can also auto scale uh, your applications with them. Now, I've mentioned um, security before a bit. What we want to try to do is that we have as less secrets in the cluster and that we um, also reduce the duplication of the secrets. Now, your deployments will have to authenticate to the systems anyway, but we also want you uh, to have the controls to use um, separation of concern and give an identity to the workload give an identity to Keda for auto scaling. So you can manage the permissions differently. You can rotate them, um, but you don't have to. We don't force you to do it. Although it is a best practice, sometimes you can't or um, it is not uh, the best fit at the time. Now, what we do is we give you the trigger authentication and the cluster trigger authentication uh, CRDs which basically allow you to reuse the authentication uh, by either using environment variables uh, on the scale target, Kubernetes secrets, but we also support other secret stores like HashiCorp Vault, or if you're on um, a cloud platform, uh, we support some of their no secret authentication offerings like Azure Managed Identity and AWS Pod Identity. So by using those, you have no secret authentication, nothing to worry about. You simply rely on your cloud provider to manage that. Now, let's have a closer look uh, and show this in action. So what I'll show you here is um, one of our examples that we have where we will use a .NET Core worker, which is processing an Azure Service Bus queue. And then we'll basically add um, auto scaling with Keda so you can see how easy it is um, to get started. Now, before we dive into it, um, I have a service bus namespace here in the Azure portal. You can see that I have one queue, which is called orders at the bottom. And then if we have a look at the access policies, so the different um, identities in this case, um, because we will use a connection string, uh, you can see that we have an identity for the autoscaler, uh, which is Keda and requires managed permissions. We have one for the portal and the generator, uh, which we just use for the sake of the demo. And then we also have one for the application. Uh, so that's the workload we, that we run, which only has listen permissions. So because we use, we will use the trigger authentication, our application can be scoped to just listen permissions and the autoscaler manage. If we would reuse the same uh, connection string, then our application 
would require to have more permissions. We will not do this here, um, but uh, this is just to show that you can separate those. Now, as you can see uh, on this portal, we have no messages on the queue. We have a clean sheet and we will get started. So in here, I have um, basically one deployment running. As you can see, it is the order processor. It is super simple um, and it is purely demoware. So if we have a look at the deployment, you'll see that we um, just run the image from um, GitHub's container registry uh, for Kada Core. We uh, mentioned that it is using connection string authentication. If you want to run the same demo with managed identity for Azure, you can just go to the GitHub repo and follow along. Um, but for the sake of the demo, we pass the connection string of the queue uh, and we give it the name of the queue. And then we also have the secret here with the connection string. So if I would go here and say, give me the pods, we will have one instance and I will watch the logs for that one and just show that it is up and running. So on the bottom right here, I have an order generator to queue some example work. So if I now queue one message, you will see on the left side that it got immediately processed straight away. Now, what we'll do is we'll queue a lot more work. So let's say we will queue 250 uh, orders. So now the generator will start generating the traffic. And on the left, you see that our order processing is slowly processing those messages, but it is not that fast. So in the portal here, you see that it's going way up and it is almost never going down because it is that slow. So this is a perfect case for Kena, okay? So what we'll do is we will break in here, we will clean uh, and we will just watch the deployments here. Now, if you want to get started with Kena, it's very simple. You can do Helm install Kena. Oops. Just as simple as this. In this case, we installed it to the Kena namespace, uh, Kena system namespace. Um, however, I already did it. So if we just check, you see that it is up and running. Uh, and if I do a k get all on the Kada system, we can see that it basically installs uh, the Kada operator and the Kada metrics API server. Okay. Um, if we do a k get CRD, you'll see that we also add some uh, CRDs over here. Oops, over here. Um, to authenticate. Now the version that I have installed doesn't have the cluster uh, trigger authentication yet. If you would use the latest version, you can do it. Now, what does it look like to get uh, things auto scaled? So I have another file here, which has a scaled object and the, the trigger authentication. So let's start with the trigger authentication. So with the trigger authentication, we have the various options to authenticate. In this case, um, I will refer to a Kubernetes secret, which you can see here below. So it has the um, base64 encoded connection string, that, which is not super secure. Um, but for the sake of the demo, we will use this. And we just refer to the, to the secret. We say which key it should use. And then the parameter name. Now the parameter name is specific to um, the trigger, the authentication trigger that we want to use which brings me to the documentation. So if you go to kda.sh and you want to see which scalers we support, you can basically see the full list already here. Uh, and if we go and have a look, you see every single scaler that we have, okay? If I go to Azure Service Bus, uh, which is the trigger that we will use, it basically gives you all the uh, information you need. And in our case, we are using the connection uh, authentication parameter for our trigger authentication. So this is what we will use. In the meantime, you see that um, our message processor still hasn't picked up. So we still have time. Now, if you look at the scaled object, this is basically where we define everything related to the scaling itself. So first we define what the scale target is. So in this case, we use um, just a name 
which implies that we will scale a deployment. So this is an exact match of the deployment that we have uh, already up and running, picking up those messages. Now we also define um, what the maximum replica count is. So basically we're telling Keda to go all the way to 25. You can also define a minimum replica count. Um, if you want to always have five instances up and running, this is where you can configure this. Now I left that out because we will use zero, which is the default, meaning if the queue is empty, we will scale down to zero instances. And then it is super simple. So you can have one or more triggers. In this case, we have one trigger, which is of type Azure Service Bus. We give the name of the queue and say, hey, we want to start scaling if the queue has five messages or more. And in terms of authentication, we just reference our, our trigger authentication resource that we have in the cluster. So this is just as simple as it is. We have an existing deployment running. We, def we just point to it. We say how many instances we want and when we want to scale. If you add multiple triggers, it will basically start scaling if one of them meets the criteria, which is important. So what I will do now is I will um, apply oops, um, that scaled object. And as you can see, it adds the scaled object, trigger authentication, and our secret. So if you would do give me the scaled objects, you can also see uh, that it was it is targeting the deployment, the name of the deployment, maximum of 25, and it is ready to scale, and it is actually active. So on the right, you now already see that it is scaling from one to four, uh, and it will start spinning up the pods to process them uh, as we go. So if we now have a look, you'll see it starts slowly um, picking up the work. And then in the meantime, you see it already went to eight. Now for the trigger authentication, authentication, we have the same experience. So you can see all the trigger authentication resources in your cluster. You can also see that we are in this case pointing to a secret. Uh, and not pod identity, for example. So in terms of the operators, they also have the, the controls of getting more information uh, as we want. And of course, if you want to have a closer look, you can always use describe to understand what's going on uh, and have more information. In the meantime, if we check, our queue is already empty. So we have basically fanned out to process the whole queue. And if we go back, you see that Keda already scaled all the way down to zero. So if we do a get pods, uh, there's basically nothing to show here because nothing is up and running. If we now queue back up uh, two messages uh, or 10, sorry, you will see that um, in a second, Keda will uh, see those messages again and will start uh, scheduling the work again. So this is just as simple as how you can do auto scaling with Keda. You have an existing deployment. You just say how to scale it and how far, and then uh, we will handle everything for you. You don't have to worry about HPA metric adapter, etc. If you want to, you can see the HPA that we use under the hood. You can also um, influence the HPA um, by tweaking it how it should work. Uh, you can see in our documentation what that should look like. So you can also have control there if you have to, but generally we uh, say that you don't have to. Okay, so if you're not a Kubernetes expert, you can also uh, do auto scaling fairly easily. Now, if we have a look at the community that we have around Keda, uh, it's, uh, it's growing uh, fairly a lot. So we have uh, more than 3K stars on GitHub and more than 100 in, uh, contributors from various companies like, uh, of course, the maintainers, but also people like IBM, Shutterstock, and other companies. And we do bi-weekly community standups on Tuesday. So if you are interested or have questions or doubts, please make sure to join one of those and we're happy to discuss them. Um, and you can find more information on our website. Now, most importantly, who is using Keda? Is it already mature enough? Do people already trust it? And I'm happy to say yes. Um, 
We have various products that are relying on Keda to do the autoscaling. For example, Apache, Airflow, and Astronomer are autoscaling the workflows with Keda. We have serverless um, tools like Azure Functions and Fission who are relying on Keda to do the application autoscaling. And then we have others uh, like Dapper and Knative that use it as well. But also in terms of end users, we have a growing catalog, including major uh, companies like Alibaba Cloud and Microsoft, uh, and also others like uh, Cora, Lux, uh, Cora Logic, sorry, and uh, Shader, Hyperion, Roadsworks, and others. And we're actually constantly adding more and more of them. Now, if you're interested in why Alibaba Cloud uh, decided to use Keda for all their application autoscaling, you can go to the CNCF blog where we did uh, uh, an article with the kind people from Alibaba Cloud talking about why they chose for Keda and how it helps them do autoscaling very easily. Now, another example was Azure Functions. So uh, I will not dive into the demo here but it is just as simple as using the Azure Function core tools. Um, you can deploy Azure Functions to Kubernetes and behind the scenes, they are automatically installing Keda for you, creating the scaled object for you. So they are using Keda to manage the auto scaling for their serverless workloads without you even having to worry about it. So if you want to give this a go, it's just as simple as um, doing these three lines uh, and you are up and running on your Kubernetes cluster, automatically scaling those Azure functions. Now, in terms of roadmap, um, we are constantly evolving, but one of the major aspects that is missing today is HTTP workloads. HTTP is a, a little bit harder to scale because all the, all the things that we mentioned before, for example, the queue, you exactly know how much work is on the queue. Um, while with HTTP, it is synchronous communication and you don't know how many calls will be there in five minutes, for example. Um, so it is a bit harder. So now we have an, an alpha uh, version of this up and running on, on GitHub basically, uh, where we have an, an add-on scaler, which you can deploy separately which is aiming to um, deliver scale to zero uh, for HTTP uh, without a dependency on Prometheus. Um, and this is fairly important for us because if you're using a cloud vendor, you could also use their telemetry and observability stack. Uh, and it's a bit ridiculous to just spin up Prometheus to do auto scaling. So we want you to choose. Um, if you have Prometheus already, you can use um, Keda today and use the Prometheus um, scaler. Or if you don't have Prometheus, but you still want to scale HTTP, what you can do is use this add-on. You can deploy it and you can use the new CRD, which is called HTTP scaled object, where you basically define what you want to um, scale. You define the amount of replicas, and then we will basically do all the hard work. Um, we support today Ingress, but we're also planning on supporting Gateway API, service meshes by relying on the service mesh interface and service to service communication. So if this is important for you, please go and give it a try, share your feedback and let us know what you think. Um, but we are super focused on this because this is very important. Okay. Now, how does it work uh, in the current version? So um, you bring your own workload, you bring your own service because you know how to expose your service. Uh, and basically we'll use core Keda and extend it. So we will have, a, we have a Keda HTTP operator to manage the new CRD. And basically we use an interceptor um, between your ingress and your service so that all the traffic goes through the interceptor um, to measure the traffic, but also to hold the requests. Because if you support um, scale to zero um, with HTTP calls, which are synchronous, you have to hold the request until the service has spun up and then you, and then you can forward that request through. Um, but as I mentioned, this is alpha, but we are very eager to hear, hear what you think uh, and also what the scenarios are that you're looking to solve and we can work with you to make it better. 
Now, in terms of what else we are planning to do, so we are constantly adding new scalers and new secret sources to authenticate. For example, at the time of the recording, we are adding Azure pipelines so you can automatically scale um, build agents so that if you have a lot of um, pipelines or builds that are pending, you basically scale out on Kubernetes to serve that um, build pool. Uh, sorry, the build queue, and then you can basically scale as you want. Uh, if you have any other needs, uh, we are happy to add them, frankly. Um, we have recently added Kubernetes events to Kada. Now we are also going to add cloud events in case you want to expose them outside of the cluster or integrate with existing tools um, to gain more insights. We're also working on adding, uh, building a community around the external scalers so that you can also use um, the, the great scalers from other people uh, and also making it better to discover them. And that's why, for example, we're working with the Artifact Hub to expose Kada scalers in there as well. So if you today have an external scaler, you can now go to the Artifact Hub, um, add a new uh, source, and then it will automatically be listed on Artifact Hub. And then lastly, we're working on CNCF graduation to incubation, uh, which you can find on GitHub as well. But we are fairly agile uh, where we have a public roadmap. And if we have people who have certain needs that are uh, crucial, then we are happy to work with you and see what we can do. So don't hesitate and open those feature requests. Now, if we go back to our Kubernetes cluster to summarize, um, you can basically use Kada in the whole auto scaling bigger picture of Kubernetes, where we have Kada for the application auto scaling, so we can scale our app across nodes. But of course, this is not enough. You can still use the cluster auto scaler to basically resize the whole uh, cluster so that your application can even scale further. Um, but at some point, your cluster will be full. Cluster autoscaler will not be able to keep up. And then um, based on the cloud provider that you use, you can also scale beyond the cluster and overflow the workload. So in this case, if you use an Azure uh, Kubernetes service cluster, you can use virtual nodes to overflow the capacity to Azure container instances for that serverless Kubernetes experience. Now, the beauty of Kada is also you can scale down to zero, which is also important from a cost perspective, because if our orders app goes all the way down to zero, implicitly you can fully rebalance the cluster. You can get rid of Azure container instances. You can remove one node and you can basically save a lot of resources in your cluster. And with that, I would like to thank you uh, for your time and open up for Q&A and here if you have any questions. Thank you for joining.